Hello guys, this is James and you're watching another episode of Less Architecture. I would like to apologize for my disappearance for two weeks. Um, I haven't uploaded anything for that period and the reason being the first week I was ill, I had the flu, so I couldn't do anything really. And then for the second week I basically had to catch up with all the stuff that I wasn't able to do due to my illness. So that's the reason. But enough on that. Uh, from now on, I hope that everything will be back to normal. So some of you may already know that I'm planning to get into uni next autumn of 2018 to do my master's. And in the UK, it's called RBA part two and for that i need to submit a portfolio at the moment i do have a portfolio and it served me well until this point it got me a job but i just don't feel that is the right way to present myself to a university professor because portfolio for a job and portfolio for uni are two different things you can see my current portfolio uh, on issue.com i will leave the link in the description you can have a look it's free it's open full resolution uh, you can have an idea of on what i have at the moment and we're gonna try and improve it which i don't think it would be really hard and because i'm going to be super busy for the next two months i've decided to document and record the entire process so basically i'm going to take you from the beginning of creating and setting up a, an indesign document which we're going to do today to doing diagrams explaining your projects uh, doing um, texts what to include what to not include how to print it where to print it and all of that stuff so I think it would be very useful for you guys and for me and without any further ado let's just jump straight into it. Now the interface might differ depending on the version of InDesign that you're using. Uh, I'm using the most up-to-date version which is uh, InDesign 2018. Uh, you might have different ones, but I think the main process would be really similar. So let's just start. To create a new document, go to File, New, Document, or Control N. If you're on Mac, then it's Command N. Now, you get this kind of new window. If you go to Print, you would get these most popular and most used presets. Again, you can do a custom page like a square or a golden ratio or whatever, it really depends on your taste. But you have to remember that if you don't use a standard version, then you would have to crop it. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go for the standard A4. I think it's really the best. I could go for A3, but I think A4 would be just good enough. So uh, once we've done that, let's just rename our document and call it portfolio version, version three. Mm, yeah, version three, that's good. Um, pages one columns we don't really want that I mean you could divide it into columns but I'm going to do it a bit differently and in any case we could just go and um, add them later if we need but more that later margins uh, basically this is kind of a safe area really safe area indicator for you um, you could put them in or you might skip them and I'm actually not going to put them in because I'm going to use a guide 
Bleeding Slug, um, this is this would only apply if you are sending your document to a professional printer. Then you would have a three millimeter uh, bleed. And this will basically mean that if you have an image, they would fill the entire page. When they would print your uh, document, you wouldn't have any white borders around uh, your document. Uh, okay. And once you're happy, yeah, just click create. So now we have our page. So to create more pages, just go to file, new, sorry, not file, uh, layout, pages, insert pages and insert as many as you want. Uh, my limit, which been set by the university that I'm applying to, is 30 pages. It doesn't specify if that's including the title page with the cover, um, that would be 32 pages because we have one, we say 31. And you could say if you already have a few pages, you can even specify if after a certain page or before. That's really self-explanatory. So now I have my basic layout. See, really simple. Uh, nothing difficult about it and just for fun let's just uh do the first page um file place raw expert okay so this image is exactly a4 size but because i'm going to send this to a professional printer I have to make it a bit bigger just because, you know, if they're going to crop it, uh, I want this image to fill the entire page, uh, which is this. And the bleed line is this red line. Um, so if you have a blue outline, basically this is the mask. And is basically the same as a mask in Photoshop. It indicates an area which will be which would be visible to you. And then if you double click and you have this red or brown outline, then this is the actual image. So let's just increase the size using shift. Yep. That's good. And you can see it's a bit pixelated. Um, um, this is done in order to make your compute, computer run more smoothly. Because imagine if you have like 100 pages and uh, each page is displayed 100%, it would be a bit slow. So in order uh, to um, kind of fix that, uh, your image is displayed at a lower quality. Uh, but if you want to see the full quality, you could either go to view display performance and change it to high quality. But then this means that your entire file would be changed to that. Or if you just want to see uh, the final quality of this particular page, you just, just click this image or page and then just go to right click and display performance and high quality display. Just wait a few seconds and here is the image. See, nothing hard about that. Um, the quality is good. I quite like it. Oh, another, another thing. If the file that you import is a PSD file, i.e. Photoshop, then you can actually edit it. Well, not through InDesign, but if you want to edit it, InDesign would update it automatically. So because it's a PSD file, if you go, if you right click and go to edit original, Photoshop will 
open the file, well, the original file, and you would be able to edit it. So here is the file. And actually, for those of you who don't know, I've explained how I created this particular image in one of my previous tutorials. Again, the video would be in the description link. So go and check it out. Yeah, so if we, let's say, decide to change this text or increase the size to, well, 30. 30 is good. Yeah, put it around here. If we go to File, Save, yeah, if we just save it, so wait a second, and go back into InDesign, wait a few seconds, and you can see it's updated automatically. So this is really great because you don't have to re-import your images after you save them, you know, it's really easy, really fast, and very great. And if you don't want to see this, the, the bleed, you just want to see the final result, you just go to this screen mode and just go to preview, and it will just show you how the final <laughs> printed version will look. Yeah? Normal. So in the next video, I will show you Probably the first spread will fill this in and the project we'll be work working on is this. Uh, it's an art studio and I've actually redone the render, the main render. And I'll show you this is an updated version of this pretty much. Uh, I think this looks better than know you may uh, feel differently but well that's how I feel <laughs> um, and I've also done a section and a plan of this project as well stay tuned because I will show you how I created both the render and the section with plan uh, it's actually really simple if you want to see how to do that and stay tuned otherwise this was james um if you like this video then don't forget to hit that like button it really helps me um i hope this was useful as always you can send me messages via facebook i will reply to you within 24 hours um you can also submit requests for new tutorials thank you for watching this was james let's architecture <laughs>